I'm Garland Dalkey, author of the Esther Synchronization Planner, and I'm going to go through the steps involved to use this planner. The first step was that we downloaded it from the internet, and I did this at the iowabcenter.org website. I used their search engine where I typed in Esther Sync Planner and then followed the link, and it allowed me to download this program. This program is an Excel worksheet, so you need to have Microsoft Excel on your computer. You don't need a brand new version of Excel, an old version will work just fine. And because it is a spreadsheet, I also just left it right here on my desktop. I saved it right to my desktop, so every time I need it, after now that I've downloaded it, I just double click here, bring it up and use it. I don't need to go back to the internet to use it. Now there's two other websites here I'll point out quickly. One is the beefrepro.info website and then the AppliedReproStrategies.com website and these two websites contain a lot of background information that may be handy to know when getting cows bred and it also has some other technical information that may be of interest to you. Over to the left here are the members of the Beef Reproduction Task Force currently on board and they're also very good references in terms of figuring things out to get cattle bred. So feel free to contact them if necessary. All right, back to our program now. What we're going to do to run the program is we're going to go to a tab at the bottom of your screen called Planner Worksheet. Now on this Planner Worksheet, we can provide some background information, and this stuff will appear on every printout we generate. For instance, the producer name, if you're generating reports for clients of yours, or even if you're for yourself, you can label which protocol this is for. So if this is for my heifers, let me just label it as 2015 heifers. Anyway, every protocol printout will have this label on until I change it into a different protocol. That helps us keep it straight. Then our inputs. The first input we're looking at is breed type. We have two options here, number one, Boss Taurus, number two, Boss Indicus. Boss Taurus would be cattle of European origin. Boss Indicus would be cattle of origin near the equator. So if you have Brahma type cattle or you have a lot of Brahma influence in your cattle, you'd be looking at Boss Indicus influence. If your cattle are straight bred Hingus or Hereford or Simmental, you'd be dealing with Boss Taurus. So if I'm going to do a protocol for black Angus cattle, I'm going to put a 1 here. And then it's going to ask me for the system type. Now there are three types of systems, and within each type there are a number of different protocols we can use. Now the first type would be Estrus AI. And in this case, we synchronize the cattle to all show heat relatively at the same time. We watch for standing heats, then we breed. The next type would be the Estrus AI with a cleanup AI component. And what we do there is we synchronize, watch for standing heats and breed, and then any animal that has not shown a standing heat, we do a fixed time protocol at the end and just breed her with them. And then finally, the true fixed time protocols where we synchronize and breed without watching for standing heats are in the number three category. In this situation, I'm going to try a fixed time protocol, so I'm going to put a 3 here, and notice down below, I have two lists, and the lists are populated based on the number I put here. Now these would be the different protocols that I can use that are fixed time, either for heifers or for cows, and this would be beef cows. There are some less preferred systems below that, and with these less preferred systems, it's generally less preferred because you either have to handle the animal more frequently or your breeding efficiency may be a little less because of the conception rates. So these are our options for our fixed time protocols and being that I'm going to be breeding heifers I'm going to be looking at these. Now I use these numbers to indicate which protocol I want to use and for instance if I want to use a MGA with prostaglandin protocol. I'm going to put in a number 27 here. Okay. Then I can indicate the day I want to start to breed these animals. So if my target breeding date is May 30th, I'm going to type in May 30th. 
and then if I want to breed in the morning, late morning, I'll type in, for instance, 10 o'clock. Notice when I type in the time, I write in the number, then I put a space, and I type in either AM or PM to designate if it's morning or afternoon. And then I can indicate the GnRH product that I plan to use, as well as the prostaglandin product that I plan to use. Some of these products need veterinary approval, so be sure you get that before picking your product. In my case, I'm just going to use number 5 for both cases. I'm going to breed for a GnRH and prostamate for a prostaglandin. And then finally, days from last day, I had the bull turn in. And in my case, I turn in the bull about two weeks later to give a little bit of time between the AI pregnancies and the bull bred pregnancies to help designate the calves where they come from. And then over to the right, I have some outputs showing. First would be my expected calving date, which if I end up breeding at the end of May, I'll probably have calves showing up at the beginning of March. My prostaglandin injection, this would be the last prostaglandin injection prior to breeding. And we put this value here because this is a critical time between PG and breeding, that, that duration of time. And so here I'm going to be giving a prostaglandin injection on the 27th of May at 10 a.m. And I'm going to be planning to breed three days later on the 30th at 10 a.m. Next, and it just shows me how many trips I'm going to run these animals through the chute. In this case, it's twice. Once will be for this PG injection. The next time will be when I breed them. And then below, I have a little help box here where I can indicate the number of cattle that I can work per hour. Every farm is different, so put in your own value. And then my group size. And what will happen if your group size gets too big, for the number of cattle that you can work, you'll get a warning down here below, and it'll tell you to either reduce your group size or plan a different strategy because the timing is critical. Notice also there's a comment here, these little red flags, and what these are is they just explain for yet after watching this video. I can then do a cost comparison of other synchronization protocols that I may have considered using. So I'm using 27, but if I wanted to use number 23, which is a 7-day Cosync plus Cedar protocol, or 38 or 32, I can just simply type in these values here, and below I have a printout that shows the costs involved of using these versus the one I've chosen. There are a few more inputs here that we can concern ourselves with, if you wish. One would be our our yardage charges, or forage and grain, we may be using MGA charge. In this case, I'm going to be using MGA. And I can put those costs in here, and it'll give me a yardage charge for synchronizing using MGA. Then the drug charges over to the side of that I can place. And together, these will give me a cost per AI pregnancy. Notice I don't have a pasture charge, so if you're synchronizing on pasture, this is left out. This is only for dry lot. There are some user-defined charges we can put in here. So if we're using ultrasound or if we're using breeding patches, we can put those in here and we can figure that into our cost as well. Next then we have a comments section, which the comments relate to the system we've chosen. These would be the pluses and minuses of the system, things that we need to be aware of. And then under that would be the system itself and our schedule we'll be following. So the date, the day of the week, and the activity. And then finally at the bottom, we have our cost comparison that I referred to earlier. So I'm going to be using this MGA system here and it's going to show me what my drug cost will be. Then I have a yardage and management charge so it shows me total charge at the bottom and then I have these other systems number 23 my drug charge the management charges and here I don't have any dry lot charges so that's left out and then finally my system 38 same thing 
underneath that then, taking these values and putting into our conception rates, we get an estimate of what our AI pregnancy charge or, or cost will be. So all animals are going to be getting bred in this case, because this is a fixed timed AI protocol. So we're going to just worry about this line. And if we get 35% of them to conceive, here's our cost per AI pregnancy. If we get 75% to conceive, notice it's less than half or in terms of cost per AI pregnancy. Okay, if everything looks good on this page, we can then go to our printouts. We can go to our calendar printout. And notice here's my group of heifers. It shows up on top of the printout. My drugs that I'm going to be using, my starting date for breeding, the day the bull goes in, and the start of my calving season. Then I have the data involved in what I need to do each day throughout the breeding season. So if I use an MGA protocol, notice I'm going to be starting this more than a month ahead of when I actually breed. So I'm going to start feeding my MGA at half a milligram per head per day on the 25th of April. I'll be doing this for two weeks. My calendar lets me know that as soon as I pull this MGA out of the ration, I'm going to have many females showing estrus, but I do not want to breed at this time. However, a couple weeks later, here on the 27th, I'm going to give this 5cc shot of prostaglandin, I'm using prostamate as my product, to all of these heifers. I'm going to wait 72 hours, and then I'm going to give another shot. Well, here it's GNRH, and I'm going to fix time AI at that time as well. Now, we do have a window of opportunity to breed. We're going to be targeting our PG injection on the 27th at 10 a.m., and we're going to try and complete our timed AI breeding between 8 a.m. and 12 p.m. on the 30th. Our targets were 10 and 10, but we do have a two-hour window plus or minus at target time. This printout can then be printed by selecting our file and then going to print. Notice we can select the PDF printer here and we can print our file to a PDF form where we can email to somebody or we can send it right to our normal printing machine and make a copy for our refrigerator. All we need to do is just hit print. It's all formatted and ready to go. Our other option then would be to go to our printout tab. And on this tab, notice there's a lot of the same information we've already looked at, only here it's formatted for printing. Again, we can select File, Print, and our first page will show our comments and our activities. Our second page will show our cost information and our, finally our cost per AI pregnancy, depending on our success rate. And that's really all there is to using this program. I hope it works well for you. If you have any questions, feel free to email me. My email is listed right here. And I hope you have good success breeding your cows.